In the dense jungles of Vietnam, throughout the 1960s and early 1970s, a hidden and insidious enemy lurked, waiting to claim the lives of unsuspecting soldiers. Amidst the brutality and chaos of the Vietnam War, the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese Army employed a terrifying array of booby traps, designed to demoralize, maim and kill those who dared to venture into their territory. But what were these deadly devices? And how did they come to define the conflict that still haunts the memories of so many? From the infamous Punji stake pit to the lethal bamboo whip, these ingeniously cruel traps claimed thousands of lives and left countless others physically and emotionally scarred. As the military strategist Sun Tzu once wrote, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. The traps of the Vietnam War exemplified this philosophy, sowing fear and uncertainty amongst the troops and forcing them to confront an enemy that was as invisible as it was deadly. Join us as we venture into the treacherous battlegrounds of the Vietnam War, exploring the sinister world of booby traps that instilled terror in the hearts of soldiers. Welcome to the Diary of Julius Caesar. Ingenious ambush, a dive into the Viet Cong's guerrilla tactics. During the Vietnam War, the Viet Cong, a communist guerrilla group fighting against the US and South Vietnamese forces, became known for their cunning and effective tactics. As a result, the term Viet Cong guerrilla tactics is often used to describe the innovative methods they employed to outmaneuver their enemies in the dense jungles and rice paddies of Vietnam. In the late 1950s and throughout the 1960s, the Viet Cong developed a complex and highly effective strategy to counter the superior firepower and resources of the US and South Vietnamese forces. Their success was based on their ability to blend in with the local population and utilize the natural terrain to their advantage. They also understood that their greatest weapon was the element of surprise, and they relied on it heavily in their battle strategy. One of the key elements of Viet Cong tactics was the establishment of a vast network of underground tunnels, such as the Chu Chi Tunnels near Ho Chi Minh City. These tunnels, often built beneath villages, allowed the Viet Cong to move undetected and evade enemy forces. They also served as living quarters, storage spaces, and even hospitals for the guerrillas. The Ku Chi Tunnels are now a popular tourist destination, showcasing the resourcefulness and tenacity of the Viet Cong fighters. The Viet Cong's most iconic tactic, however, was their use of traps. These ingenious devices were designed to maim, kill, or demoralize enemy troops, often using the simplest of materials. Punji sticks, for example, were sharpened bamboo stakes hidden in the ground and coated with harmful substances to increase the risk of infection. These devious traps struck fear into the hearts of enemy soldiers and were remarkably effective, causing countless injuries and hampering the movement of troops. A well-known historical figure associated with the Viet Cong's guerrilla tactics is General Vo Nguyen Giap, the mastermind behind many of their successful campaigns. His famous quote, we will fight the enemy with our cunning and make them die in their anger, encapsulates the Viet Cong's determination to use their resourcefulness to overcome the odds. In addition to the aforementioned traps, the Viet Cong employed a variety of other inventive methods to inflict damage on their opponents. Booby traps, such as the infamous Bouncing Betty mines and modified hand grenades, were used to catch soldiers off guard and cause devastating injuries. Meanwhile, net traps and falling traps ensnared enemy troops, leaving them vulnerable and exposed to further attack. The psychological aspect of the Viet Cong's tactics cannot be understated. They sought to instill fear in their enemies by using poisonous animals like snakes and scorpions in their traps, and even tampering with food and water supplies. The goal was to make enemy soldiers constantly question their safety and undermine their morale, ultimately breaking their will to fight. Subterranean strongholds, unraveling the secrets of the Ku Chi tunnels. The Ku Chi tunnels, a sprawling network of underground passageways spanning more than 250 kilometers, played a critical role in the Viet Cong's guerrilla warfare during the Vietnam War. Built between the late 1940s and the 1960s, these tunnels stretched from the outskirts of Saigon 
to the Cambodian border, providing a hidden base for the Viet Cong to launch surprise attacks, move supplies and evade capture. Life in the Khu Chi tunnels was far from easy, as the Viet Cong had to contend with limited space, poor ventilation and the constant threat of discovery. Despite these challenges, the tunnels were equipped with various facilities that enabled the guerrillas to live and work underground for extended periods. These subterranean spaces included sleeping quarters, meeting rooms, kitchens, and even makeshift hospitals where the wounded could receive treatment. The tunnels were ingeniously designed with multiple levels, secret entrances, and hidden exits to confuse and deter enemy forces. Some entrances were concealed under the floors of homes or disguised as termite mounds, while others were submerged beneath the surface of rivers or rice paddies. The tunnels were also equipped with booby traps, such as punji stick pits and trip wires connected to explosives to protect against intruders. The Kyu Chi tunnels were not discovered by American and South Vietnamese forces until the early 1960s. Once they realized the significance of these subterranean networks, a concerted effort was made to locate and destroy them. This led to the formation of specialized units known as tunnel rats. Small, agile soldiers who volunteered to crawl into the narrow, dark passageways to search for enemy combatants and dismantle booby traps. One famous tunnel rat, Sergeant Samuel Orozco, recalled his experience in the Kuchi tunnels, stating, you never knew what was waiting for you around the next bend, a tripwire, a snake, or maybe even a Viet Cong soldier. The tunnel rat's work was harrowing and dangerous, but their bravery and determination helped to counter the Viet Cong's subterranean advantage. Despite the efforts of the tunnel rats and other military forces, the Khu Chi tunnels continued to be a formidable challenge for the US and South Vietnamese troops. The Viet Cong's knowledge of the tunnels and their ability to navigate them with ease allowed them to launch ambushes and then disappear without a trace. This left the enemy forces feeling frustrated and demoralized as they struggled to adapt to this unfamiliar terrain and style of warfare. Some notable incidents that took place in and around the Khu Chi tunnels include the Battle of Khu Chi in 1966 and Operation Cedar Falls in 1967. During the Battle of Khu Chi, U.S. forces launched a large-scale attack on the tunnel complex, but the Viet Cong managed to escape and later regrouped. Operation Cedar Falls, on the other hand, was a massive search-and-destroy mission that aimed to flush out the Viet Cong from the Iron Triangle, a region that included the Chu Chi tunnels. While the operation destroyed a significant portion of the tunnel network, the Viet Cong still managed to rebuild and continue their guerrilla campaign. Bamboo's darker side, the punji stick trap in the Vietnam War. The use of punji sticks by the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War is a prime example of how simple, locally sourced materials could be transformed into deadly weapons. These traps, consisting of sharpened bamboo stakes hidden in the ground, were designed to cause severe injuries and spread fear among the enemy troops, demonstrating the resourcefulness and cunning of the Viet Cong fighters. Punji stick traps were typically deployed in areas where US and South Vietnamese forces were likely to travel or seek cover, such as along jungle trails or near riverbanks. They could also be found around the entrances of the Khu Chi tunnels to deter and injure those who attempted to infiltrate the underground network. In order to maximize the damage inflicted by punji sticks, the Viet Cong often coated the tips with harmful substances, such as venom from poisonous plants or human and animal excrement. This added a further layer of danger, as even minor puncture wounds could lead to serious infections and complications. The use of punji sticks dates back to the First Indochina War, when Vietnamese guerrillas employed similar tactics against French colonial forces. However, it was during the Vietnam War that these traps became infamous, as the Viet Cong refined their design and deployment to maximize their impact on the enemy. One famous account of a punji stick encounter comes from U.S. Marine Private First Class Frank Harbert, who had the misfortune of stepping on a punji stick trap while on patrol in 1968. He recalled, I felt a sharp pain in my foot, and before I knew it, I was on the ground, screaming in agony. Harbert's injury, while not life-threatening, 
took him out of the fight and required weeks of recovery. The psychological impact of punji stick traps on enemy forces cannot be understated. The constant threat of stumbling upon these hidden hazards made soldiers anxious and less focused on their surroundings. As a result, their morale suffered and they became more susceptible to making mistakes. US and South Vietnamese forces took several measures to counter the threat of punji sticks. They developed specialized footwear with reinforced soles to protect against puncture wounds, and they often sent scouts ahead of the main force to probe the ground for hidden traps. In addition, they learned to identify and avoid areas where punji sticks were likely to be deployed, such as dense undergrowth and seemingly innocuous clearings. However, the Viet Cong continued to adapt their tactics in response to these countermeasures. They began to build more sophisticated punji stick traps, with some designs featuring hinged or spring-loaded mechanisms that could snap closed on a soldier's limb, causing even more devastating injuries. The Unseen Danger Booby Traps and Landmines in the Vietnam War The Viet Cong's use of booby traps and landmines during the Vietnam War demonstrated their mastery of psychological warfare as they preyed on the fears and vulnerabilities of US and South Vietnamese forces. These deadly devices, ranging from modified hand grenades to sophisticated mines like the infamous Bouncing Betty, served not only to cause physical harm but also to demoralize enemy troops and disrupt their operations. The Bouncing Betty, officially known as the S-Mine, was a particularly fearsome weapon that originated in Germany during World War II. When triggered, this mine would propel itself into the air before detonating, causing devastating injuries to those nearby. The Viet Cong obtained these mines from various sources, including captured enemy stockpiles and clandestine shipments from sympathetic nations. In addition to the Bouncing Betty, the Viet Cong employed a wide range of other booby traps and landmines, often improvised from available materials. These included toe poppers, small mines designed to maim rather than kill, and tripwire mines, which would explode when a soldier unwittingly disturbed a concealed wire. Some traps were even designed to resemble everyday items, such as rocks or foliage, making them virtually indistinguishable from the surrounding environment. One notorious example of a booby trap employed by the Viet Cong was the grenade in a can. This simple yet deadly device consisted of a hand grenade placed inside an empty tin can with the pin held in place by a rubber band. When a soldier stepped on the can or disturbed it in any way, the rubber band would release, pulling the pin and causing the grenade to explode. This trap was particularly insidious as it could be easily concealed and was difficult to detect. The widespread use of booby traps and landmines took a heavy toll on US and South Vietnamese forces, both in terms of casualties and morale. Stories of soldiers losing limbs or their lives to these hidden dangers spread fear and unease throughout the ranks. One soldier, Private Leonard Thompson, recounted his experience with a booby trap, saying, You never knew when it was going to happen. Every step could be your last, and that weighed heavily on your mind. In response to the threat posed by booby traps and landmines, US and South Vietnamese forces developed various countermeasures, they employed minesweepers and specialized equipment to detect and disarm these devices, and they also trained soldiers to recognize and avoid common booby trap locations. Additionally, they conducted extensive aerial reconnaissance missions to identify enemy minefields and plan their movements accordingly. The Art of Entrapment Net and Falling Traps of the Viet Cong The Viet Cong's use of net and falling traps demonstrated their resourcefulness and cunning as these simple yet effective devices allowed them to incapacitate and demoralize US and South Vietnamese forces. These traps served as both physical and psychological weapons, as the fear of becoming ensnared or falling into a hidden pit weighed heavily on the minds of soldiers. Net traps, also known as man-catchers, were designed to ensnare enemy troops and lift them into the air, rendering them helpless and vulnerable. These traps consisted of a large net often camouflaged with foliage, which would be spread across the ground and secured with a series of stakes. When an unsuspecting soldier stepped on the net, a concealed rope would be triggered, pulling the net tight 
and lifting the soldier off the ground. These traps were often used in conjunction with other devices, such as tripwires or punji sticks, to increase their effectiveness. One notable example of a net trap's use occurred in 1966 during Operation Attleboro in the Tainin province. A US soldier named Sergeant Michael O'Brien was patrolling with his squad when he suddenly found himself lifted into the air by a net trap. He later recalled, It happened so fast that I didn't even know what hit me. One moment I was walking, and the next I was hanging from a tree. Fortunately for O'Brien, his comrades were able to cut him down and continue their mission, but the incident served as a stark reminder of the ever-present danger posed by the Viet Cong's traps. Falling traps, on the other hand, were designed to cause enemy troops to fall into hidden pits filled with sharpened stakes or other hazards. These traps were often disguised as natural depressions or covered with a thin layer of foliage, making them difficult to detect. When a soldier stepped on the concealed pit, the covering would give way, causing the soldier to plummet into the trap below. One of the most infamous falling traps was the tiger trap, a deep pit lined with sharpened bamboo stakes. The stakes were often smeared with poison or excrement to increase the likelihood of infection and slow the healing process. These traps were particularly dreaded by US and South Vietnamese forces as the prospect of falling into a pit of impaling spikes was a terrifying one. A harrowing account from a South Vietnamese soldier, Lieutenant Tran Van Thuan, illustrates the gruesome nature of these traps. He recounted, I saw a friend of mine fall into a tiger trap during a patrol. The spikes pierced his legs and it was impossible to pull him out without causing more damage. We had to call in a medevac helicopter and it took hours to safely extract him. Venomous warfare. Viet Cong's use of poisonous creatures and sabotage. The Viet Cong's employment of poisonous animals and the poisoning of food and water supplies epitomize their mastery of psychological warfare. In their efforts to undermine enemy morale and create an environment of fear, they turn to nature's most dangerous creatures and subtle methods of sabotage. Snakes and scorpions were frequently utilized by the Viet Cong as part of their deadly arsenal. These creatures were placed in hidden compartments, booby traps, or even soldiers' sleeping areas, where their venomous bites could incapacitate or kill. One infamous tactic involved placing venomous snakes in the bags of American and South Vietnamese soldiers when they were sleeping, leading to a rude and potentially deadly awakening. The fear of encountering these creatures in the dense jungles of Vietnam added an additional layer of anxiety to the already challenging environment. One notable incident involving the use of snakes as weapons occurred in 1967 when a US Marine named Corporal John Harker was bitten by a deadly crate while on patrol in Quang Tri province. Harker later described the incident, saying, I felt a sharp sting on my arm and saw the snake slither away. Within minutes, my entire arm went numb and I could barely move. Fortunately, Harker's quick-thinking comrades applied a tourniquet and called for a medevac, saving his life. This encounter, however, left Harker with a lifelong fear of snakes and served as a stark reminder of the Viet Cong's resourcefulness. In addition to utilizing venomous creatures, the Viet Cong were known to poison food and water supplies, causing sickness and even death among enemy troops. These acts of sabotage targeted the basic necessities of life, creating an atmosphere of constant vigilance and distrust. It was not uncommon for US and South Vietnamese forces to find poisoned food or water caches left behind by retreating Viet Cong units. One such instance occurred in 1968 when a South Vietnamese unit discovered a cache of poisoned rice in the Mekong Delta. The rice had been treated with a toxic substance that caused severe gastrointestinal distress when ingested. Several soldiers became ill after consuming the tainted rice but fortunately, no lives were lost. This incident, however, prompted stricter precautions regarding food and water consumption among Allied forces. The Viet Cong's use of poisonous animals and sabotage tactics also extended to their own ranks. In a desperate attempt to maintain discipline and loyalty, Viet Cong leaders would sometimes use the threat of poisoning as a deterrent against desertion or collaboration with the enemy. One Viet Cong defector Nguyen Thi Lan 
recalled the chilling warning she received from her commander. If you betray us or try to escape, we will find you and your family, and we will make sure that every meal you eat will be your last. The Silent Menace, Wire Traps of the Viet Cong. Among the myriad tactics employed by the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War, their use of wire traps stands as one of the most insidious and effective methods of causing injury and death to their enemies. Utilizing simple materials and leveraging the dense jungle terrain, the Viet Cong turned the battlefield into a veritable house of horrors with traps like the snap trap and slide trap. Snap traps, also known as whip traps, were designed to inflict sudden and severe injuries. These traps were typically constructed by attaching a length of wire to a bent tree or bamboo stalk under tension. One end of the wire would be anchored to the ground, while the other end would be fitted with a sharp object, such as a metal hook or barbs. When an unsuspecting soldier tripped the wire, the tree or bamboo stalk would snap back with tremendous force, driving the sharp object into the victim with enough power to cause severe injury or even death. One harrowing account from a US Army soldier named Private James O'Neill details his encounter with a snap trap in 1966. O'Neill was on patrol in the jungles of Bin Din province when he stumbled upon a tripwire. He recalled, I didn't even see the wire until it was too late. Suddenly, I felt an intense pain in my leg and I looked down to see a metal hook embedded deep in my calf. I couldn't walk and my buddies had to carry me out of there. O'Neill's story is just one of many illustrating the dangers and fear that these wire traps instilled in enemy troops. Slide traps, on the other hand, were designed to take advantage of the terrain and cause victims to lose their footing and fall into a prepared pit or onto sharpened stakes. These traps consisted of a smooth, downward-sloping surface camouflaged with leaves and branches, often placed along a frequently used trail. A tripwire would be strategically positioned at the top of the slope, and when triggered, the victim would lose their balance and slide down the trap, sustaining severe injuries or even death. A particularly chilling anecdote comes from a South Vietnamese soldier, Lieutenant Tran Quoc Hung, who encountered a slide trap in 1970. He recounted, We were moving through the jungle when one of my men tripped a wire, and suddenly, the ground beneath him gave way. He slid down into a pit filled with sharpened bamboo stakes and there was nothing we could do to save him. The memory of that day haunted Tran for the rest of his life, serving as a grim reminder of the cunning and lethal nature of the Viet Cong's wire traps. Defying the hidden dangers, disabling Viet Cong traps. As the US and South Vietnamese forces grappled with the ever-present threat of the Viet Cong's deadly traps, they soon realized the necessity of developing countermeasures to protect their troops and mitigate the physical and psychological impact of these hidden dangers. Through innovation and adaptation, they devised various methods and tools to disable and prevent Viet Cong traps, turning the tide of the conflict and saving countless lives. One of the key figures in developing countermeasures against Viet Cong traps was Captain Ernest Ernie Brace, a U.S. Army engineer who arrived in Vietnam in 1963. Upon witnessing the devastating effects of Viet Cong traps on American troops, Brace became determined to find ways to counteract these insidious devices. He began studying captured traps and working closely with local allies to develop a comprehensive understanding of the Viet Cong's tactics. With the knowledge gained from his research, Brace and his team formulated a series of guidelines and techniques for detecting and disarming Viet Cong traps. They trained soldiers to recognize signs of tampered vegetation and disturbed soil, to spot tripwires, and to approach suspicious areas with caution. These guidelines also emphasized the importance of communication between soldiers to share information about potential traps and ensure that everyone was vigilant and informed. In addition to training soldiers in trap detection, the US and South Vietnamese forces also developed specialized tools to disarm and neutralize Viet Cong traps. One such innovation was the trap probe, a long metal rod with a curved tip that soldiers used to probe the ground ahead of them for hidden traps. By gently pushing the probe into the soil, they could detect the presence of a trap without setting it off, 
allowing them to safely disarm or bypass the device. Canine units also played a vital role in detecting and disarming traps. These highly trained dogs, often German Shepherds or Labrador Retrievers, were able to detect the scent of human presence and disturbed earth, alerting their handlers to potential traps. These canine heroes not only saved countless human lives, but also provided invaluable companionship and emotional support to their handlers and fellow soldiers. Efforts to counteract Viet Cong traps extended beyond the battlefield as well. Back in the United States, engineers and researchers worked tirelessly to develop new technologies and protective gear to shield troops from the devastating effects of traps. Innovations such as lightweight body armor, puncture-resistant boots, and specialized helmets were all products of this relentless pursuit of better protection for those on the front lines. Ingenious subterfuge, a historical tapestry of deception in warfare. Throughout history, deception has played a significant role in military strategy, shaping the outcomes of countless conflicts. While the Viet Cong's use of booby traps and guerrilla warfare in the Vietnam War is a prime example of such tactics, it is essential to recognize that they were far from the only force to employ subterfuge in pursuit of victory. From the Korean War to even earlier conflicts, the art of deceit has continued to evolve, reflecting the ever-changing nature of warfare itself. The Korean War, which took place from 1950 to 1953, saw both North and South Korea, as well as their respective allies, employ various forms of deception to outmaneuver their enemies. For example, North Korean forces made use of camouflage and concealment techniques, hiding their artillery and other military assets in well-concealed underground bunkers or natural terrain features. Additionally, they employed hit-and-run tactics similar to those of the Viet Cong, using their knowledge of the rugged Korean landscape to strike quickly before melting away into the shadows. On the other side of the conflict, South Korean and UN forces employed deception in the form of misinformation campaigns aimed at disrupting enemy communications and sowing confusion among the North Korean ranks. One notable instance occurred in October 1950 when a UN deception plan codenamed Operation Pole Charge successfully convinced North Korean forces that a major amphibious assault was imminent, diverting their attention and resources away from the actual front lines. Going further back in time, World War II saw the widespread use of deception, with both the Allies and the Axis powers employing a wide array of tactics to gain an advantage on the battlefield. The famous Ghost Army of the US Army, for example, was a unit tasked with creating illusions of large troop movements and deployments using inflatable tanks, fake radio transmissions, and other forms of subterfuge. This deception was so successful that German intelligence vastly overestimated the strength of American forces throughout the conflict. Similarly, the British made extensive use of double agents and misinformation campaigns to keep the Axis powers guessing. The elaborate ruse known as Operation Mincemeat saw British intelligence plant falsified documents on a corpse dressed as a British officer, which was then allowed to fall into German hands. These fake documents successfully misled the Germans into believing that the Allies were planning an invasion of Greece rather than their actual target of Sicily. Even in ancient history, deception played a crucial role in warfare. The famous example of the Trojan horse, as recounted in Homer's Iliad, demonstrates how the Greeks used cunning and subterfuge to infiltrate and conquer the city of Troy. Similarly, Chinese military strategist Sun Tzu's influential treatise, The Art of War, emphasizes the importance of deception in achieving victory, with the famous quote, all warfare is based on deception. Echoes of War The enduring impact of Viet Cong traps on soldiers and the land. The Viet Cong's extensive use of booby traps during the Vietnam War had profound consequences on both the soldiers who faced them and the landscape of the region, leaving a legacy that lingers long after the conflict's end. These traps, often crude but terrifyingly effective, not only inflicted severe physical harm on US and South Vietnamese forces, but also played a significant role in undermining their morale and shaping their tactical approach. As US and South Vietnamese forces 
ventured into the dense jungles and treacherous terrain of Vietnam, they quickly learned that the hidden traps laid by the Viet Cong were a constant threat. The uncertainty of whether the next step could result in a gruesome injury or even death took a heavy psychological toll on the soldiers. This ever-present fear led to increased stress and anxiety, eroding the fighting spirit of the troops and contributing to the overall disillusionment with the war effort. Additionally, the traps forced US and South Vietnamese forces to adapt their tactics in response to the unconventional nature of the conflict. Traditional military formations and strategies proved less effective in the face of such elusive and deadly threats. Consequently, US and South Vietnamese forces had to rely more on small unit tactics, patrols and reconnaissance missions, often entering hostile territory with limited support. This shift in approach further exposed the soldiers to the dangers of the Viet Cong's traps, creating a vicious cycle of fear and adaptation. Yet the impact of these traps was not limited to the soldiers who faced them during the war. The landscape of Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos still bears the scars of these brutal devices, with countless unexploded ordnances and traps remaining hidden in the region's forests and fields. These remnants of war continue to pose a significant threat to local populations who must navigate this deadly legacy on a daily basis. One particularly poignant example of the lasting impact of these traps is the story of Aki Ra, a former child soldier in the Khmer Rouge. After the war, Ra dedicated his life to removing landmines and unexploded ordnances from Cambodia's countryside, eventually establishing the Cambodia Landmine Museum and Relief Center. His tireless efforts have not only saved countless lives, but also raised awareness of the long-lasting effects of these devices on the region and its people. In their own words, voices from the Vietnam War's hidden dangers. The Vietnam War was a conflict fraught with danger and uncertainty, and the Viet Cong's extensive use of booby traps only served to heighten the sense of dread experienced by those who fought in it. By sharing the personal stories and testimonials of veterans who encountered these hidden threats firsthand, we can gain a deeper understanding of the profound impact these tactics had on the lives of those who served. One such story comes from John Thompson, a US Army veteran who served in Vietnam from 1968 to 1969. He recalls the day his platoon was sent to investigate a possible Viet Cong supply cache. As they moved through the jungle, one of his fellow soldiers unwittingly triggered a tripwire, setting off a hidden explosive. In an instant, the soldier was grievously injured, and Thompson was left with the harrowing memory of that day. He later remarked, you never knew where they were, and it seemed like they were everywhere. That was the scariest part of the war for me. Another veteran, James Walker, recounts the chilling experience of being caught in a Viet Cong wire trap. As a member of a reconnaissance patrol, he was tasked with moving stealthily through the underbrush to gather intelligence on enemy movements. One fateful day, he felt a sudden tug on his leg, followed by searing pain. A sharpened bamboo stake had pierced his calf as a result of a wire trap. The experience left him with not only physical scars, but also a deep-seated fear of the unseen threats that lurked in the shadows. Patricia Johnson, a nurse who served in a field hospital during the war, bore witness to the devastating consequences of Viet Cong traps on numerous occasions. She recounted the story of a young South Vietnamese soldier who had been caught in a trap involving venomous snakes. The soldier had been bitten multiple times, and the venom had taken a catastrophic toll on his body. Despite the medical team's best efforts, he ultimately succumbed to the toxins. Johnson reflected on the sense of helplessness that she and her colleagues felt in the face of such insidious dangers. A poignant anecdote comes from Charles Nguyen, a former South Vietnamese soldier who later immigrated to the United States. He recalls being captured by the Viet Cong and forced to watch as his fellow soldiers were subjected to a horrifying ordeal. The captors had placed scorpions inside small bamboo cages and fastened them around the soldiers' necks. The prisoners were then left to endure the torment of the scorpions' stings, a cruel reminder of the Viet Cong's merciless tactics. After his eventual release, Nguyen carried the memory of that night with him, a chilling reminder of the war's dark underbelly. 
As we conclude our journey through the hidden perils of the Vietnam War, we are reminded of the profound impact these cunning traps and tactics had on the lives of those who served. The ingenuity of the Viet Cong, coupled with the resilience and bravery of the soldiers and support staff who faced these dangers, has left an indelible mark on history. In the words of US Army General William Westmoreland, who commanded American forces during the Vietnam War, War is fear cloaked in courage. Indeed, the stories we have shared today are a testament to the courage of those who faced their fears in the face of the unknown, navigating a world fraught with invisible threats. As we reflect on the lessons and legacies of the Vietnam War, may we never forget the sacrifice and valor of the men and women who confronted these hidden dangers and persevered through adversity.